A $6 million grant at the Singapore General Hospital will fund a new project for systemic sclerosis patients. The aim is to better diagnosis and personalize treatment for the, tr for the disease that has poor survival rates, killing one in two Asian patients within four years of diagnosis. Researchers will analyze patients' genes, immune systems, and bacteria, gut bacteria, and more over the next five years. But what exactly is systemic sclerosis? It's also known as scleroderma, or literally hard skin, where the immune system malfunctions and begins to attack healthy tissue, making them produce too much collagen. It can cause skin to harden and restrict blood flow to the extremities. Other organs can also be affected, like the heart, muscles, joints, lungs, digestive system, and kidneys. What causes the disease is still not known. There is no cure or effective treatments for systemic sclerosis. The condition affects 8 in 100,000 people or close to 550 patients in Singapore. Symptoms are managed with medication to limit damage to internal organs as well as to slow the disease's progression and improve patients' quality of life. For more, I'm joined by Associate Professor Andrea Lowe, lead of Singapore Systemic Sclerosis Precision Medicine Project. She is also Senior Consultant at the Department of Rheumatology and Immunology at SGH. Dr. Lo, thanks for joining me today. Now, first of all, why do Asian patients have poorer survival rates with the disease? What are some factors contributing to this? Yeah. So we know that um, Asians have a certain autoantibody profile that is different from people in uh, Caucasians mm. in the West. Um, this particular uh, SCL70 antibody is more prevalent in Asians and that actually confers increased risk of lung fibrosis, mm -hmm. which is one of the leading causes of death in this condition. Mm -hmm. um, and when patients present with lung fibrosis, they are also more severe, unfortunately, in Asians. Um, and also in Asians, there are different genetic risks, yeah. um, which is unique to the Han Chinese and Japanese and Koreans. Mm -hmm. And we know that potentially that could confer a different risk profile as well. All right. Mm -hmm. So the, the program that we're talking about, the Singapore Systemic Sclerosis Precision Medicine Project, how does it differ from, I suppose, existing programs treating the disease? I mean, are we talking about an Asia versus a Caucasian uh, type of difference kind of treatment and study? Right. Well, this study uh, differs from conventional approaches in that um, conventional approaches tend to focus on one aspect or dimension of the disease at a time. For example, they just look at the immune system or just the microbiome. Um, but here we are actually looking at integrating six different dimensions of a uh, patient and so we are actually approaching it in a very holistic way. Mm. And we can only do that nowadays with the advent of AI, very powerful tools um, that allows us to integrate this data and then come up with predictive algorithms on mm. profiling patients of who's going to get worse. Okay, yeah. and this project that you're doing, is it? are you looking at just uh, Singaporeans or what is your pool of your study? So does it include the East Asians, like the Chinese and the Japanese? Yeah, so we are starting off in Singapore, mm -hmm. um, but with our ethnic um, diversity, this really um, also likely applies to the rest of Asia Pacific. Mm. And certainly in the second phase of this uh, project, we are looking at validating our results mm. in the Asia Pacific region. And already we have uh, collaborations across 16 um, centres in, in seven countries in Asia Pacific region. Yeah. Okay. Now, how will existing, I suppose, and mm. future patients stand to gain from, from this research? I mean, will you be able to come up with more effective treatments for them? Yeah. We're hoping to be able to have better strategies to approach um, the disease. So, for example, matching the right patients to the right drug yes. um, uh, at the right time. So, it's very important to treat them in a very timely manner. Um, we don't want to over-treat patients yes. either. Right. Yeah. And of course, to discover new drugs um, that are potentially able to um, target the three key processes that are happening in this condition. Yeah. Right. And um, there is currently no known cure for systemic cirrhosis. Um, are you hopeful that the project will bring us one step closer to a cure? And what else needs to be done? Yeah. 
Yes, we, we certainly hope that this project will bring us one step closer um, in uh, a treatment plans for our patients. Um, and the next step would really be validating it in the Asia-Pac region. Um, so, for example, one um, novel way of um, managing patients is this um, novel lung um, cell imaging. Um, we are hoping to be able to identify thresholds for that and then be able to actually um, apply it to the patient. So this will allow us to predict and crystal ball who with lung fibrosis is going to mm -hmm. um, progress. How hopeful are you in terms of, say, a timeline to perhaps even finding a cure? I think finding a cure would be, within a five-year period, would be optimistic. Mm. Um, but what we are hoping is to uh, identify new targets mm -hmm. um, that we can then partner with industry pharma mm -hmm. um, to then develop this further. So I think this is a, a very important and key project which uh, we are engaging uh, industry um, partners at the same time. Right, yeah. and here's to a good next five years then. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Right, and that was Associate Professor Andrew Lau from SGH. Um,